All right, welcome to uh, today's presentation on Get the Complete Customer Picture in HubSpot with Scribe. I'm Lynn Harrington. I'm the Director of HubSpot Enablement here at Scribe, and I'm joined by Brendan Pe Peterson, um, who's a HubSpot Technical Evangelist, and uh, Brendan will be doing our demonstration uh, later in the presentation today. So let's start with a couple of housekeeping items first. Um, there are some icons down at the bottom of your screen, some important icons. The first is the blue icon uh, that is the media player icon. And this will allow you to adjust the sound, but also to pause or forward the presentation. And the presentation will be available to you for about two hours after, um, after this viewing. So if you do want to forward it on to a colleague, feel free. We will be monitoring the presentation um, through chat, so feel free to submit questions and we will answer those questions. If uh, we run out of time and are not able to answer the questions through chat, we will follow up with you via email after, afterwards. And then there is a resource folder. We will uh, include a slide at the end of the presentation with some additional links, but definitely the, the links and slide deck and case study and other resources are available in that folder. So feel free to access that as well. Okay, so today's agenda. Um, we're first going to talk about why HubSpot customers would need Scribe for data integration. Why would you want to integrate HubSpot to your uh, CRM system and why would you use Scribe? Then we're going to move on and Brendan is going to give you a demonstration of Scribe Online and our HubSpot connector. Um, lastly, we'll tie it back to, again, some key benefits to HubSpot customers and uh, we'll continue on with the Q&A for a period of time. For those of you that are not familiar with Scribe, we do offer solutions for data migration and integration um, and have done so for a very long time. One of our focus markets has been um, Microsoft Dynamics CRM, so um, we're the leading application that is used for integrations with Dynamics CRM. Um, we have, over the past couple of years, seen a real uh, growth in the needs of tying various marketing solutions and systems together uh, with CRM systems and other uh, sources of um, customer data, which I'm going to talk about in a few moments. So this has become a focus area, and certainly HubSpot being a leading marketing, um, inbound marketing application, um, it's key to tie it into CRM, and we'll talk about that in some more detail. So why HubSpot customers choose um, really to integrate uh, specifically um, with Scribe? So certainly um, there's the need to, to sync contacts between HubSpot and CRM. Why re-enter that data? Why take the time to do that when you can very easily and seamlessly integrate those? Um, however, not everybody uses the, the custom lead entity, and so with Scribe, you really get the flexibility to say, am I going to use the standard lead entity? Am I going to use a custom lead entity? What if um, I'm the type of customer where everything in my CRM system is actually treated as a contact instead of the notion of accounts and contacts and leads? We've got that covered, so you really have the flexibility to integrate HubSpot into your dynamic CRM system regardless of, of your um, workflows or uh, data models. Sales um, is able to easily access um, HubSpot data right within dynamic CRM. So it's really important to speak with one voice as you're talking to your prospects and your customers. So the ability for your salesperson to continue to work within dynamic CRM, uh, but through an iframe be able to see all of the activity that's gone on with that customer within HubSpot, it enables them to customize their conversation and their follow-up activities with that customer so that they're really providing the most relevant information and honing in on how best to move that, that prospect or their customer forward in their decision-making process. Close of reporting is one of the key features of HubSpot. Um, great reports and dashboards, but of course you need the data to populate those. How do you do that? By setting up a seamless integration where as soon as opportunities are closed from um, leads that have come from HubSpot, that information is updated in HubSpot so that you can see when it closed, how much it closed for, and really hone in on your most um, lucrative and fruitful um, marketing campaigns. And then lastly, we support all deployments of CRM. So it doesn't matter whether you're using CRM online, on-premise, or a hosted version. Scribe can be used regardless of the deployment. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Brendan, who's going to talk about um, some use case scenarios and then go into the demo. All right. So um, 
I won't go through all the bullets on the slide you guys can read, so I won't have to read them to you. But basically, what we've got with, with HubSpot and CRM uh, is what we call a starter pack. This allows you to sync some you know basic data back and forth. Mainly, you know, the biggest driver to this is sharing contact data from HubSpot with leads and contacts within Dynamic CRM. So anyone that comes in brand new from HubSpot, allowing that to sync with CRM, um, and it has some intelligence there as well. So you know, is it a contact? Make sure it's if it's there, update it. If it's already a lead, update that before creating a new lead. So making sure we don't propagate a ton of duplicates into your your CRM system and just create clutter and, and noise. Like Lynn said, that could be leads and contacts, that could be custom objects, that could be accounts, that could be whatever you really want it to be. Uh, we've defined the logic already. All you have to do is really swap out the entity and the rest of the logic applies. So you can change how that however you wish. Also to that, what we've done inside of CRM is we've added in a couple of iframes on the forms for leads and contacts. This is going to link back to a um, profile URL within HubSpot. That gives us the ability right within CRM to see the activity data, to enroll those contacts and leads in workflows in HubSpot. So it actually gives us a window to interact with that record um, from dynamic CRM without needing a, a login account to HubSpot. Uh, so it's actually a really cool feature. Um, it's something that, that they have offered natively, but there's not a lot that, you know, that not, not a lot of people are doing this with it of offering that, that kind of iframe piece. So it's kind of a new a new thing that we're doing, but it's it's really pretty cool. Lastly, is the closed loop reporting, so allowing those opportunities created inside a CRM to flow back to HubSpot. This allows HubSpot's marketing teams to be able to you can you can establish reports, you can do that closed loop reporting, um, you can evaluate how the campaigns are doing based upon actual revenue that's coming in. So it's a really um, powerful feature, and it enables some of the HubSpot functionality. That is why you get that platform. So within Scribe, um, what we'll do is really cover a couple things really quickly. First of all, the way that we support, um, you know, Lynn mentioned on-prem, online, partner hosted, is with what we call an agent technology. So agents can either run in the cloud or on-premise. So if you have a HubSpot CRM online, you can use a cloud agent completely managed by Scribe, no software installation period. If you have on-premise data though, on-premise CRM, uh, maybe you have a text file or a SQL database you want to get some data from into HubSpot, you can deploy an on-premise agent. It's about a two-minute wizard, um, really simple to use, but it allows you not to have to poke holes in your firewall. Uh, that agent reaches outbound to HubSpot, outbound to whatever it needs to talk to, but it makes it a much friendlier IT conversation than saying, you know, open up port 443, do this, do that. Um, it's a lot simpler to not have to make your systems internet facing by deploying that agent locally. So what we've got between these systems, um, like I said, we've got kind of a starter pack that exists here. So I can see within this that I've got a series of maps that have been built, uh, moving contact data back and forth. If I dig into each one, I can see the logic that applies. So it's kind of well documented. It can read from the top down, figure out what it's doing, um, find data in HubSpot, update it, create it. Each one of these, these kind of blocks that you see here have different field mappings. So if I want to add additional field mappings, I've got particular um, data points I want to push across, I can just drag and drop that data. And that's going to allow me to then map my custom fields, my standard fields from CRM into HubSpot or vice versa. You can see up top here I can apply logic to that so I can do some data transformation. Um, but it's a really simple field mapper, so it's not going out and writing a little bit of, of .NET code to do this. Uh, it's just using this drag and drop interface to kind of support that, that model. I could also use, like I so show here, um, the opportunities being synced back and forth. So that opportunity is going to come from CRM, and I can see that I can do joins, so I can bring in related data, and I expose everything in CRM. So because we use the CRM API, we get every object, every field that exists within that system. And the same thing for HubSpot. We have a list of all the different objects that are exposed there. So we can do, you know, by the operations. I can do opt-outs. I can add and remove individuals from lists. Um, these functions are really important because Let's say for HubSpot, since it is inbound marketing, you might have a really large top of the funnel with, um, with inbound contact coming in, and you may not want every single one of them to get down to CRM. 
So I can set up uh, kind of inclusion lists inside of HubSpot to say when they follow this workflow, put them into this list, and then well, I want Scribe to pull leads off of that list and put them to, to CRM. So I can have in inclusion and exclusion lists to say these, these guys aren't ready yet, these ones are, um, this is why they are, and those rules can change within HubSpot and feed us a different set of leads however you want to, to set that up. So it's kind of a nice feature that we can, we can use that and leverage some of the HubSpot functionality versus having to do absolutely everything inside of Scribe. And then lastly, you can schedule these things. So I can set this up to run every minute. Um, it's simply going to go out and every minute it's going to look for change data and move it back and forth. And I can set up in the background. It'll just run. If there's ever an error or anything I need to be alerted about, um, Scribe will send out a proactive email to me. So it's great that we can have that thing running on a polling process, but it's also nice that we can do more uh, event-driven integration. So HubSpot has the capability to call out to webhooks via the workflow. And what we've got in Scribe is the ability to utilize um, that call out by exposing Scribe as a REST web service. So I can see this guy here. It's got a little different look and feel, but basically it's going to grab that, um, that webhook request and do something with it. So in this case, I can see it's actually going to go out. It's going to grab that contact. It's going to enrich it using inside view uh, and then update HubSpot with all that good inside view data. So why is that important? Well, I can kind of show you here. So I've got a form, and I'm going to just fill in the email address. So I've got nothing required. Um, again, most people who are marketers probably won't do this, but for the sake of argument, let's say that email is the only thing required. So I can submit that. I now have got Lynn's email in there, but I know nothing about her. Um, I know like where her IP is, but that's pretty much it. So what good is that to me? Not much. I can send out an email saying, hey, dear blank, you know, thanks for coming on my website. I don't know anything about you. This is really not an engaging email. You're probably not going to follow up with me. It'd be nicer if by running it through that inside view product, I could actually get more data about that person. So give us a quick refresh here. And obviously that lead um, is automatically created here, but I can see that that webhook's already fired and I've got all this information about Lynn. So I've got her name, her company, her address, her role, what the, the type of company she works for is. Um, I can bring back all that good data, enrich it inside of, of HubSpot, and now I know more about Lynn. I can better segment, better target, better personalize with that record. What I also get is because I have the natural sync going on between HubSpot and CRM, Lynn's record is going to get down to Dynamic CRM and it's going to have this complete data. So it's really nice that I don't have to worry about, you know, just getting a, an empty email. I can see now I've got Lynn's record in here that you just created. Um, I can see all that same data. So now as a sales rep, I might come in here and say, okay, this is great. I can take a look down here. I can see some HubSpot data. I can see these high frames, how she came in. So she came in through my lead capture. Um, she's actually got an email scheduled to come out to her. So I can see she's enrolled in one workflow. So I get this nice glimpse into HubSpot from the iframes inside of, of Dynamic CRM. What's also nice is that I'll go ahead and I'm going to qualify Lynn, uh, which means that she's going to get converted over to a contact. What's really cool about this is that that history of Lynn's is going to follow her. So just because she happens to have been, been changed inside of CRM, I'm not going to get another contact in HubSpot. I'm going to keep working with that same individual. And a couple of things are going to follow along with that. So within Lynn's record, she's qualified. Um, I know she's looking for, for something from me, so I'm going to add an opportunity for her. And we'll just say she needs stuff. So really not much in the opportunity, but I know that she has an active opportunity now. That scribe sync is going to pick up on the fact that she now has an opportunity. It's going to re-update her contact record inside a HubSpot, and it's going to allow us to then see that she's gone from a lead to an opportunity. Once that record is synced, I can then close the opportunity, and I'll see she moves from an opportunity to a customer. So I can track her life cycle uh, really simply through this interface because I'm going to follow the normal process I always do in CRM, and I just have Scribe listening on the other side, and it's going to push that data over uh, into HubSpot. So we take another look at Lynn, and I can see here that she's become an opportunity. Um, another minute or so, I'm going to get a sync back across, and she's going to become a customer. So I've got that ability now that I can expose that closed-loop reporting to my HubSpot users 
um, by simply following the same sales process that I always do inside of CRM. And I don't have to, again, I don't have to grant a login to a CRM user to HubSpot to do all this. I can really keep these separate uh, and allow each user to work in their, you know, their own territory, their own, own application. Thank you, Brendan. Okay, so just to uh, recap, I think um, you've probably seen from the demonstration um, some of the key benefits around Scribe is first and foremost flexibility. So um, really, if you, you know, hopefully we spurred some ideas today of, of things that you could do going beyond even just um, dynamic CRM integration with HubSpot. Um, I think you saw the, probably the ease of use. So it does not require a developer. Um, it's really something that can be handled by a marketing technologist. Um, probably somebody more than um, um, your average HubSpot user, but certainly a power HubSpot user could could uh, work with Scribe Online as well. In the area of connectivity, um, just a reminder here that customer and prospect data exists in more than just Dynamic CRM. So as you become a more sophisticated HubSpot user, you are able to um, you are able to you know expand. Um, the data sharing that goes on with HubSpot. <coughs> Fourth, innovation. It's a full-featured platform. We continue to develop on it um, every day. And um, not only with the core technology, which Brendan showed you, but in the area of connectivity. So um, these are the, the um, different sources that we can connect with now, both on the application side and um, certainly with technology connectors, what we call technology connectors so that you can connect to lots of data sources um, through very standard methods of, of connectivity. And again, this is something that you can phase in and um, leverage over time. Um, in addition to HubSpot and Dynamics uh, integration, you can certainly integrate um, Dynamics CRM with a very, you know, various uh, sources um, all through Scribe Online. Okay. Now we uh, will leave some time for Q&A, so feel free to submit your questions. We certainly will answer those. And uh, a reminder, if we run out of time here, we will follow up with you um, certainly through email to get you the answers to those questions. To continue your evaluation, feel free to um, look at more information through YouTube, our blog, or to contact a salesperson. Uh, again, that resources folder is also available to you. There's links and resources in there as well. Thank you for your time today.